before we go any further, let's say a big hello to the man we all love who's here in the studio back again this morning. I think you're probably the biggest friend of the show because you've been on so many times, Tony. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be back again. Good to be back again. again. And it's good to see Motley the dog again. Good morning, Motley. Woof, woof, woof. Yes, he's uh, chilling out a little bit now. He is. He's had his bowl of water. He's all sorted. That's it. He's, he's cool now. <laughs> yeah, he's very good. So we're taking questions this morning right up until 12 o'clock. Any doggy questions people have got that they want to ask you. We've had one come in already from Kelly in Southwood and Ferris. And Kelly says i take my dog to training classes we use food and toys as rewards but my neighbor takes her dog to a different training club and they're not allowed to use food in class why is this um yeah that's a very good question um to motivate a dog to do anything you've got to look at what motivates a dog um in a class situation you can reward your dog using toys or your voice you can be very happy and jolly and praise your dog but often in those situations it doesn't really cut it a dog often gets that away from class situation so certainly when i train dogs i do use food um, purely because it's a strong it's a primary reinforcer which means basically if the dogs didn't eat they would die mm. <laughs> so um, why not use it help to use it to get the behavior that you want um, if you handle it properly and manage the food properly then it's very clean and efficient way of motivating the dog you know you ask a do dog to sit um, you can even lure the dog using a little bit of food as soon as the dog sits he gets the food it's very very quick um, also if you do use food a very good idea to fade it out pretty quickly once you've got the initial behavior you know you don't always need the food you want the dog thinking well i might get a bit of food i might get a bit of praise i might get a toy so keep the dog guessing um, but certainly one thing that i find with food it also kind of conditions the dog to the environment so uh, a particularly scary possibly scary environment like a classroom a village hall which is very odd really a uh, dog walks into it if there's food around suddenly he's feeling better about the situation there's there's other dogs around they're not too bad every time i see those dogs i get food and there's a lot of people wandering around so straight away the dog likes the environment it's so like humans really i mean if you walk is, into yeah. a room and you're scared and you see a, a, a cream cake you're going to think this uh, is okay yeah, there's an idea for school yeah <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you want the environment to be rewarding. You want the dog to want to go back and not think, oh my God, I hate it there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really like toys in that situation. There's too many other dogs around. So purely, I think some classes use food um, because it's efficient. It tends to work. Um, and if a dog's not eating food, then you've got to ask yourself why. It's very likely that the dog is too stressed and maybe shouldn't be in that situation mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. So in which case, I would start working with the dog outside, maybe in the car park, and then gradually bring the dog in, maybe over a number of weeks but if a dog's not eating it's it's the old digestion shuts down ready for the fight or flight it means the dog is oh. very very stressed so it's also a good in indication for me as a dog trainer if a dog's not eating food I'd, I'd like to know why <laughs> uh, it could be that the dog doesn't like me or yeah. it doesn't like the environment but it's a very clear-cut test yeah. for me brilliant tony I thank you helps. for that lots more questions um to come i'm sure if you've got a question for tony give us a call now 01702 45 50 60 is the number to call you can use the text you can use the email you can use the facebook page get your questions in and we'll try and get as many as we can in before midday here's some white snake just great songs this is sunday live it's 11 31 now we've got tony cruz from tc dog training in the studio now there's something you haven't done yet tony you asked me mm. if you could do what oh was yeah it you wanted to do yeah yeah sorry i must say um happy mother's day to my mum who's uh listening in ells cone um she'll be listening there with her dog called woody um <laughs> woody's a greyhound retired greyhound yeah. absolutely fabulous dog um if anyone out there is thinking about getting a a dog if you've never had a dog before or if you're let's say getting on in on in years and and you want a dog that's quite chilled out generally a retired greyhound is a good choice are they relaxed animals very gentle very relaxed they call them 40 mile an hour couch potatoes <laughs> <laughs> They've done the 40 mile an hour stuff uh, around the track and all they want to do now is relax and have the odd walk here and there so um, they're fantastic dogs really are I wonderful yeah. okay next question now yeah, this is from andrew in south end um my five month old spaniel has started to become aggressive over his hide chews okay. he'll snarl growl and his hackles will rise especially when i stroke him as he chews it have you got any tips okay andrew so um what i would suggest is look at your dog this spaniel um look at what your dog is telling you um the snarling the growling are little indications that he's not happy 
Um, it's a nice form of communication. The last thing you want to do is punish your dog for growling. What I would suggest is stepping back and thinking, okay, well, he's not happy. I'll let him finish his chew and then I might work on something else. Um, what you want is your dog to be happy around you as he's eating. If you're sitting next to your dog as he's eating and touching him around his face particularly, he's not going to be particularly happy um, about it. It's going to be the same as if myself or you Tracy yeah. if you're eating something I come up and sat next to you and started patting you on the head for example <laughs> you get a slap in the face Tony that's <laughs> exactly, what you get <laughs> exactly but you wouldn't like it exactly mm. so you might even give me a warning beforehand and say look back off buddy you know mm. you're telling me to go away step away from the cake yes that's it <laughs> and if I did it again you'd, you'd probably clout me so exactly what the dog is saying so what I would work on is actually providing your dog something perhaps as they're eating um, if he's eating a, a hide I'd probably walk past him say hi and then throw him another hide um, as he goes to take that hide, you could gently take the other hide away. So you're getting used to exchanging things with him. Um, but you want to start off with something very small, like a little bit of kibble that's worth nothing. Mm. That isn't worth a great deal to the dog. Um, as he's eating that, you'll charm a little bit of cheese, for example, something really nice. And he goes, wow, I love that cheese. So he leaves the kibble. Thank you, I'll take the kibble. You can have the cheese. So whenever you're around, he's actually looking up, expecting maybe he'll get something better. So rather than thinking, oh my God, you might take that away from me, he'll be thinking, yes something nice is coming along and I love you when you walk past me because <laughs> good things fall from you as you walk past <laughs> so what better way to get the dog back on your side you know absolutely brilliant right. thanks Tony any more questions keep them coming we're going to have some music now from David Essex playing just great songs this is Sunday Live it's 11.46 now that's the Eurythmics we've got Maroon 5 on the way next before that though we've got Tony Cruz from TC Dog Training with us in the studio answering all your questions move swiftly on because we've got so many to get in uh, my border terrier Alfie oh sorry this is from Sandra and Benfley my border terrier Alfie is getting very distressed when I leave for work in the morning this is despite the fact there are other people in the house he barks and jumps at my legs as I try and open the door Tony have you got any advice Yes, uh, obviously. Good. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. Um, without seeing it, it's, it's difficult. But judging just by that, um, it looks like Sandra's dog is obviously very, very bonded towards her. Um, especially if there's people in the house and he's still not wanting her to go. So he's getting very, very anxious as she leaves. What I would suggest to Sandra is try mixing up her routine in the morning. What's probably happened is as she's leaving the door, her dog is actually anticipating this. Um, probably she'd pick up her car keys, put her shoes on, and the dog's already, oh my God, she's leaving. So if she could break up her routine a little bit, maybe change the time that when she walks her dog, um, change the time when she feeds her dog, um, picks up her car keys occasionally, randomly, so it doesn't send out a signal that she's about to leave. Um, just mess up her routine a little bit. Dogs are very, very driven by routine, and if, if it's a chain every morning, probably this little dog is getting more and more anxious every morning. Um, also, so if there's other people in the house why not get the other people to feed her dog you know to make them a little bit more of a part of the family rather than um her being the sort of provider for everything for that dog and make the rest of the family providers um and then maybe the dog won't be so drawn to her you know share it around a little bit if every member of the family feeds the dog then he might not be so sort of bonded towards her to such an extent um, but also give the dog something to do as she's leaving so really mess up your routine a little bit um, just as you're leaving maybe give your dog a kong or something yummy um, so he actually looks forward to you leaving rather than thinking oh my god i don't like you leaving that's how i do it pig's ears yeah pig's ears, pig's are pretty ears good, yeah. down flush and rusty come on here have a pig's ear in the mm -hmm. kitchen they're uh, distracted with that yeah out the front door and in the car and they're feeling good about it yeah. and, and probably as as i mentioned earlier as soon as you pick up your car keys they're thinking pig's ears yeah <laughs> they're not thinking oh you know i'm gonna be on my own so again that's conditioning that's making being on their own a good thing rather than a thing where they can get into trouble and panic wonderful thanks tony okay let's have some maroon five now They've probably got room for just one more question after this so let's make it count <laughs> This is Sunday Live. Time now for our one last question with Tony Craze, the dog trainer. Last week, my boxer Paddy jumped up at a man in the local park. Oh, sorry, this is from Dave in Chelmsford. The man insisted Paddy is dominant and said I should be more firm with him. Is my dog dominant? And if so, why? So oh, it's very exciting. <laughs> the great dominance thing. Well, this is one of the, the, the park, your local park experts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I meet lots of them every day. Um, but the whole dominance thing, I could go on about that for, for another day. Um, 
but you've got to look at the situation um i i hate to label dogs and i hate to label them dominant because if you call the dog dominant then straight away that dog's people are going to start thinking that dog's going to start pushing issues and you know taking advantage not the case in this situation it sounds like the dogs are probably unsociable um, <laughs> probably jumping up to say hi um, certainly not jumping up to dominate um, dominate him and in actual fact within the dog world um, dominance doesn't really exist there's never one truly dominant dog they'll be a little bit more forceful perhaps around something they want but that would change very, very frequently. One dog might be happy around food and might be a bit more bossy around food, um, but he won't be around toys. So this whole dominance thing is a little bit old-fashioned and a little bit misleading. So try and look at the situation, um, and rather than wondering what your dog is, let's work on how to stop your dog jumping up, for example, or how to greet a stranger more appropriately. Um, so you go back to training, um, you perhaps put him on a lead, walk up to a stranger, and whenever the four paws are on the floor, he gets a little treat from yourself. Um, so that just teaches the dog, if I stay on the floor, good stuff happens. Brilliant. Yeah, as simple as that. It's back to making the good behaviour more reinforcing and more um, rewarding. Awesome. Tony, thank you very much yeah. for that. As always, thank you for coming in for your super yeah. advice. Never okay. time to get through all the questions <laughs> people want to do. Yeah. Um, if people want to find out more, get in touch with you. You've got your Galley Woofers group. If people yeah. want to know more, how do they... they Touch base yeah, Gally Whiffers is, uh, we've got a new class is starting next Wednesday. Uh, we're looking like starting on Tuesdays as well now, hopefully if everything comes together, if the planets align. <laughs> um, but also I run TC Dog Training, which is sort of home visits, any behaviour issues. So if you want any behaviour issues, any puppies um, introduced to the world, um, I'm the person. Uh, if you want any classes, then Gally Whiffers in, where's Gally Whiffers? Gallywood. Yeah, well done. Gally Whiffers in Gallywood <laughs> is the place to go. Brilliant. Tony, thank you very much for coming in and talking talking to us this morning. Let's finish the show with a little bit of music. Here's Roxy Music.